Hello, my friends, and welcome back. <sighs> Today, we're going to be learning a little bit about fear foods, as well as taking a look at a couple of other miscellaneous clips from Laura Giese. She's been featured on this channel before. She said something along the lines of, healthy eating is not a thing, or something like that. Um, that was a really good British accent that I just did. Uh, that wasn't corny and stupid at all, I'm sure. Let us waste no more time, quit screwing around, by applying comb to mustache. I'm told that you can actually hear the comb going through my mustache. Sounds like rakes through sand. Alright, this has copyrighted music, so I'm going to provide a backing track of some other copyrighted music that I sing myself. This is not the song that was in here. Break up with your girlfriend. Yeah, yeah, cause I'm bored. Okay, uh, fun fact, cereal used to be one of my fear foods. Fun fact, my left leg is slightly longer than my right. We're just doing random stuff, right? Break up with your girlfriend. Yeah, yeah, cause I'm bored. You can hit it in the morning. Yeah, yeah, like it's yours. I know that it ain't right, but I don't care. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, um, a fear food is a something that you're afraid to eat due to potential lack of nutritional content. It is a something, isn't it? You know, one could argue that everything is a something of some sort, right? Am I just splitting hairs? This shit always happens to me, yeah, yeah. Why can't we just play for keeps, yeah, yeah. Practically on my knees, yeah, yeah. And I know the more I think about... Alright, so is this, uh, thanks to diet culture and the wellness industry... Certain foods have been labeled as good. I'm guessing that others have been labeled... <gasps> And others labeled as bad. Oh my goodness, how did I know where that was going? I must be psychic. Darn that big diet again. Labeling foods as good or bad. Hit it in the morning. Which makes us fear certain foods. Bruh. I don't know, speak for yourself. It's not making me fear anything. I don't care what these people say. However, for the low price of $19.99, you can eat whatever you want and still gain weight, I'm guessing. I'm guessing you don't promise weight loss along with being able to eat whatever you want. You can just eat whatever you want, and then whatever comes from that is, is whatever happens. <laughs> you're, like, you're like, hey guys, I have this brand new idea. Go breathe. The way that you've been breathing, keep doing it. You owe me 20 bucks. This is your reminder that food has no moral value. And then she's starting to type or something right here. Are you typing this as you said it? And does not need to be feared. All right, well, saying that food has no moral value and does not need to be feared is kind of silly. There are plenty of dangerous things that you could end up putting in your mouth and digesting that could hurt you. And many different foods are among those. Claiming that food has no moral value or that all foods are equal is basically like saying that you can go drink some antifreeze. It's the same thing as water, dude. They're both a liquid. They can both physically go down your gullet and end up in your stomach. Therefore, you're supposed to eat it and it has no moral value. Should I eat a dog turd? Huh? Just because I can? Just because it looks and smells delicious, I should eat it? You're sick. You're sick. <laughs> Despite what Wellness Wendy or Shredded Steve say. Shredded Steve now? Oh, dude, what about Shredded Sally? Dude, Wellness Wendy can get fucked. Dude, I hate that bitch. Shredded Steve, he's pretty dope, though. Shredded Sally, I never liked her from the beginning, dude. She was on point with Wellness Wendy, dude. Those two bitches. Shredded Steve, though, he's dope as fuck, dude. That's my homie right there. Shredded Steve, that's my boy. What's up, dude? Let me know if you have had any fear foods below. I'm fearful of consuming uranium. Um, can you alleviate those fears for me? Can you put my mind at ease? Should I go ahead and take a couple nibbles on this piece of uranium? I don't have any uranium. FBI, CIA, whoever heard that, okay? 
That was just a joke, man. And we'll tackle them together. What does that mean? You're just going to tell me, eh, forget about it. Just do what you want. I really don't need you to tell me to just do what I want. I have my own conscience inside of my mind that's like, hey, do whatever you feel like doing. And then there's that other one that's like, don't do that. Don't listen to that guy. He's insane. And then that third voice comes in is like, those two others are out for you. You got to listen to me. Take my hand and everything's going to be all right, kid. And then the fourth voice comes in and it's just cat noises. And we'll tackle them together. Okay, so if I tell you about my fear foods, how are you going to help me tackle them? You're just going to be like, don't worry about it. And then I'm going to be like, all right. And class dismissed. Right? That's, that's the end of that chapter. I disagree. Dang it. So like I said, man, you know, you can't just put whatever in your mouth that happens to fit in there. That's going to wind you up in some very sticky situations, literally and figuratively. Next. All right, the comment says, I can't imagine saying food is not bad is thin privilege. We all need to eat to survive. We all need food to feel safe and provided for. Um, yeah, we all do need to eat to survive. But that doesn't mean that you should use food as a drug or to comfort you. That's a whole different thing. This is an incredibly good question off the back of one of my videos where I talked about how food is allowed and can be comforting. Food is allowed and can be comforting. All right, let me stop you right there. Uh, if you do things to comfort yourself, that's bad. Like if you feel bad about something unrelated, so you go and eat or have some kind of, you know, risque encounter with a stranger in a back alleyway named Veronica, that still owes me $20. Or you might do all different kinds of drugs or comfort yourself using all different other types of addictive behaviors. Veronica, where's my money? In the comments of that video, I said that the video also reeks of thin privilege, which most things that I do, do reek of thin privilege. Ah, so you're calling yourself out for your own thin privilege. You have the privilege of being thin, and it was bestowed upon you by the fairy godmother of thinness, Oprah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> The fairy godmother of thinness is Oprah. She doesn't have to practice what she preaches. Can I say that? She's famous. I can say that she's overweight. God damn it. So you're finally calling yourself out for your thin privilege. How dare you have the privilege of being thin since you are the one who is in control of your physique and are the one that controls what you put in your mouth and also the exercise you do. How dare you get the benefits of all the work that you did. That's... Not privilege at all, actually, now that my brain is actually working and I'm thinking it through. And the reason I made that comment is because I believe that society's fat phobia and thin privilege means that if I say food can be comfort food, people may praise me for saying that. How However, if a fat person said that, they would catch a lot of flack. Um, no, I think that if anybody says something is a comfort food, that should be called out for the addictive behavior that it is. Nobody should be like, yeah, food is the one drug that we can all agree helps us through times of trouble and it's not a problem. Um, no, that, that's not how that works at all. If your boyfriend broke up with you and you turned to the donuts, uh, that's not valid, dude. That's not valid at all. However, if I was in a larger body, would I have the same interactions? You would never be in a larger body, Laura. You would only be in a larger body if you stopped doing all the things that you do to take care of your weight. We do all need food to survive, you're absolutely correct, but... Uh, I disagree. Have you never heard of the breatharians? They don't need food to survive. If you breathe just right... <sighs> oh, dude, I'm full. I'm full. I couldn't, I couldn't breathe another bite. No, but seriously, there really is a group of people called the breatharians who say that they can survive off of breath alone without eating. There's a lot of funny videos on the topic. In fact, I made one about the topic myself a long time ago. You want to check out an old video of mine? Due to society's systemic phobia. Oh, due to society's yada 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 again. It's always society or somebody else's fault instead of the individual. Again. That never gets old. There's often this narrative that absolute codswallop that people in love. <laughs> codswallop. I love that. Larger bodies don't need food. Absolute trigger warning on that. 
People in larger bodies don't need food, she says, and she says that's bollocks. So what is uh, excess adipose tissue then? What's the purpose of it? If it's not excess energy that's there to be used in times of famine, what is it for? It's just like, ah, oh, the more you eat, the more cushioned you are from cannonball blows. Like, what? Like, we're all just out on the battlefield getting shot at with cannons? What, what, what's the purpose? I'm so sorry. As I said, absolute codswallop, and I love that you know that. <laughs> Stop saying codswallop. <laughs> What are you doing, dude? We're trying to have a serious discussion here. Stop screwing around. But very often I see people commenting, saying, or oh, mm, you don't need food, or just go on a diet, or blah, blah. You don't need food, they say. Blah, blah, blah. To somebody in a larger body. However, because I'm in a thin body, I'm able to say, oh, food can be comforting, or just eat a burger, blah, and not get any hate for it. But so when you say food has no moral value, People just let that slide, but when someone who's living in a larger body says it, they get a bunch of flack from everyone. Well, somebody that's living in a larger body is giving the appearance that maybe they have a food addiction problem. Whether they do or not, they are giving that appearance. Like if you saw me stumbling down the alleyway, struggling to hold myself up, you would assume that I was drunk, whether or not I was or not. As such, if such a stumbling drunk were trying to school you on the benefits of vodka, eh, you might be like, bro, I think you have a problem. You're stumbling, falling down drunk, you've got a bottle of vodka in your hand, and you've tried to kiss me several times. Perhaps you should stop talking about the benefits of vodka. But if I was in a larger body, as I said, would my content evoke the same responses? From what I have seen, I believe the answer to that is unfortunately no. Well, it's like I said, an overweight person is seen as somebody who perhaps has an addiction problem centered around food, and you, a thin person, would not be seen that way. So when an overweight person is like, food has no moral value, a lot of people are just gonna see it as an addict trying to justify their addiction. When you do it, they just see it as a charlatan trying to make money off of overweight people. That is why I made that comment of saying that food can be comfort and comforting is thin privilege. You know what else can be comforting? A nice shot of Jack. A few shots of Jack. All right, we've got time for one more. All right, the title reads, How to Suppress Your Appetite. Am I tripping or is that not at all how you spell suppress? From a personal trainer, here- From a personal trainer. Oh, so this is not going to be complete bollocks then. All right, let's go. This is how you suppress your appetite. By eating, let's see, a very carb-laden meal, it looks like. The fitness industry and diet culture tell us to purchase their overpriced appetite suppressants. Surpressants, again, she says. Can we suppress our appetite with healthy food, or does it have to be just nonsense carbs and whatnot? Everything she's eaten so far was just carbs. Okay, there's more carbs with wacky stuff on it. So when you do eat, it's just nothing but carbs. I don't know why they've never filmed themselves eating something healthy. If it's just to push their little like narrative of like, whatever kind of food you eat doesn't matter. Look, I'm doing it. If you just tune into my ideology, then you won't gain weight from eating whatever you want either. Is that what it's trying to do? I don't know, but the only food they ever show themselves eating are like bagels and bread and a bunch of other stuff that somebody who is that cut uh, you would think wouldn't be eating that much of. I would love to see you eat that food, and then I'll just hang out by you for like the next hour or two in the same room and nobody leaves the room. Can we do that? For no reason in particular. You don't need a supplement to suppress your appetite. Stop saying suppress, it's suppress. And what is this now, pizza? You just need food! And what is this now? Another piece of bread with like, what is that, applesauce or some wacky stuff on there? Everything you're eating is just straight up bread. All of these meals are 90% bread. Alright, what are you looking at while you're eating? You're like looking right past me, and it's driving me crazy. It makes me think that there's somebody behind me making a funny face or something. Who are you looking at? Oh! 
It's him, isn't it? It's him, that son of a bitch. A lot of the time uh, when I wake up in the morning or whatever time I'm coming down the hall randomly, I'll be walking and then I'll see that poster like from over there from the other side of the hall and I'll be like, <gasps> like it'll scare the shit out of me for a second. I'll be like, I'll just be like, oh, all right, I'm going to go get some water. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. It's just, oh, it's just the most beautiful freaking piece of art that I've ever seen in my goddamn life. That's all. Nothing serious. But no, it startles me. It looks like there's a very large, excited man in my house. <laughs> that poster is actually huge. I don't know if you can tell from this perspective, dude, but it's like this freaking big. All right, so all food is equal. Food has no moral value, yada, yada, yada. Uh, if you want to drink antifreeze, it's the same thing as water. They're both liquid. Go nuts. Also, I don't actually have any uranium. Okay, remember that from earlier? Don't come for me. I didn't do anything. All right, so we've learned a little bit about how to not be too thin by somebody who is pretty thin. So once again, Laura Giese has reiterated that food has no moral value. I disagree. I think that food is very moral. If you do something immoral, like say, run over a man with your car, you can be absolved of all your sins if you eat a ribeye steak, potato, and some broccoli. It's kind of like saying a Hail Mary, you know? Have a couple of these and you will be absolved of all your sins, my son. Anyway, that about does it. Thanks for watching, commenting, liking, and subscribing. And I'll see you in the next one.